Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well, and welcome to part two of Bike News for May 2019. If you're interested in what's been going on in the world of motorcycles here in the UK for the last couple of weeks, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back to Bike News. I hope you watched part one. If you haven't, you might want to watch that first. I'll put a card up here somewhere. Uh, but anyway, this is part two. Two more uh, MCNs to go through, and then I've got some uh, parish notices, some news about what's coming up on the uh, Missenden Flyer over the next few weeks to take you through as well. So without further ado, let's crack on with the news. Okay, so this paper then, the first story I've picked out here, Triumph's Big Electric Shock is the title here, and this is the big news, or it was a couple of weeks ago, that Triumph have announced that they're going to get into electric motorcycles, specifically something they're calling Project TE1. It's a joint venture they're doing with Williams, those of uh, Formula One fame. They know a thing or two about uh, efficient engineering. And uh, basically, it's going to be something that they're going to do over the next couple of years. It's not focusing on any um, particular motorcycle model, but in uh, particular, they're focusing on the battery technology and the powertrain advances and how you package those into a motorcycle. So sounds very interesting. Sounds very much like Triumph do want to get into uh, electric bikes. It is the way of the future, like it or not. There are going to be electric bikes in our future, and great to see that Triumph are getting on board with that. Uh, you know, there's no time to sit around, is there? These things are going to be hitting the market. Oh, they're already hitting the market, but, uh, you know, en masse in the next few years, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more electric bikes. So great news that Triumph are doing that. Uh, two years, as I say, this is due to run. Uh, we'll see what they come up with after that. Don't expect any particular model, as I say, but certainly some showcasing, I imagine, uh, of what's coming up coming up there. Anyway, so that's uh, that was the first story I pulled out. So quite exciting news if you're a fan of just new technology generally. Next story here, Harley's Arch Nemesis. This is the new Arch KR GT1. This is the Keanu Reeves design bike, hence KR, I assume. Um, and this is now for the first time available here in the UK. Some journalists have ridden it, only a few actually. More of that uh, in the second paper. We'll talk a bit more about the bike, but uh, it is uh, 90 grand if you want to buy it. And for that, not only do you get a custom motorcycle, but apparently you get a bespoke purchase process as well. Goodness knows what's involved in that, but uh, if you're going to spend silly amounts of money on a motorcycle, you expect some silly things to go with it, don't you? So a uh, bespoke purchase process as well. Uh, if you're interested in a bespoke purchase process, get yourself an arch. More about that coming up uh, in a minute on the review. So swiftly moving on to the next story. Why we all need wings is the um, is the headline here, but it's not particularly uh, that that I want to talk about. And this is referring to the wings on the uh, Ducati, um, the latest V4 uh, bike. It's got all sorts of arrows on it. But the reason why I mention it is because the bike has been designed, and those wings in particular, using something called computational fluid dynamics, or CFD to you and me, where basically you put a model of the bike in a computer and it uh, comes up with, if you like, for want of a better word, a sort of virtual wind tunnel. And it shows designers where uh, turbulent airflow would occur on that bike if it were in a wind tunnel or in the real world. And it's absolutely incredible because I know from aircraft design as well that have been using CFD for some years, when they then uh, design an aircraft based on the CFD models, when you put it in a wind tunnel, basically the results completely replicate what you see on the, on the computer. So that has led to the point that for motorcycle manufacturers anyway, they don't even need a wind tunnel to test them in. They know that the CFD is going to be so accurate that, uh, that they don't, you know, the computer modeling is good enough for the, for the um, wind modeling. Absolutely amazing. I love new technology, as you may know if you've watched the channel for a while. And the fact that you can do this sort of virtual modeling on a computer now uh, is incredible to me. This allied with things like um, 3D printing. I recently went, in fact last week, I went to Oxford Products, went to their factory just north of Oxford, uh, and they showed me how they go about developing some of the components that they have. Uh, and they showed me the 3D printing setup that they have. And they basically have got a setup now where they can go and design something on the computer, and it looks photographically complete on the computer. They can basically print a button by that afternoon, they can have that part bolted on their bike because it's been 3D printed. That's if it's a simple part, obviously 3D printing takes a while, but things like CFD, 3D printing, revolutionizing the way that um, parts are being developed. And uh, you know we're gonna see the turnaround time from concept to production get much, much quicker, I think, in the future. So exciting stuff. I, I love new technology and the way it's helping, not just in motorcycling, but all walks of life, uh, things like this are useful. Anyway, what's your thoughts on that? Right, next, one of my favorite bikes. I already mentioned this in part one, if you watched that, the new Rocket. Three. Now they've actually now spotted the production version of the bike, or the pre-production version of the bike, out in the wild being tested. There's a picture here. Uh, it looks absolutely great. Now I love the uh, the TFC version, but that's a 25 gram bike. This one hasn't got the carbon bling, etc., and slightly lesser components. Although I see it's still got the big Brembo brakes on the front, etc. I think it's still going to be a well-specified bike. I think it looks brilliant. I think it looks like the sort of bike that. Um, you know when you're a kid and you had the sort of matchbox cars and there was that sort of cheaper brown with the Hot Wheels, you remember? But the Hot Wheels ones 
although they weren't such great quality, they always looked cooler. Um, this is like if Hot Wheels did a motorcycle, this is what it would look at, I think. And it just appeals to the child in me. Uh, there's nothing sensible about this. It's way over the top. It's got a way over the top engine, way over the top exhaust, way over the top looks. It's going to be way over the top in every respect, but I just love it and I want one. Don't know what the price is going to be yet, but the TFC one is 25 grand, so you can bet this is probably going to be getting well, it's going to be between 15 and 20 grand, and it's let's say 18 grand for the for the street version. The other interesting thing about this picture is in the background you can see another version of the rocket, uh, which MCN are calling the GT uh, because it's got uh, you can see on it it's got some sissy bars, it's got um, uh, what else has it got? A uh, slightly bigger screen on the front. Looks like it's going to be and pillion pegs, so it looks like it's going to and a pillion seat as well. Looks like it's going to be more of a touring sort of version of the bike. So when they do launch this. Uh, and I'm sort of expecting it's going to be launched probably in time for the NEC show this November, uh, then there's going to be at least a couple of versions, the sort of on-road street bike and a touring version. So God, I can't wait to see this thing and to learn how much it is. Even though, as I say, this isn't the, the blingy version, um, it still looks premium to me. I mean, the wheels on this thing look absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, really, really nice bike. Going to be an absolute beast to ride, I think. So uh, come on, Triumph, let us know how much it's going to cost. Uh, and let's have a go on one. It would be brilliant. Right, next story here. <laughs> from one to the other. So this is the new Suzuki Katana. So I'll say one to the other, because this is a bike I have to say I'm struggling to like. This bike recently had its UK launch. Uh, friends of mine, uh, Richie Vida and Lamb Chop went on the launch of this bike and they said they loved it. Um, and I'm sure it does ride beautifully, but I just can't get over the looks of this thing. It is based on the Katana from before. Um, I wasn't into bikes when the original Katana was around, so I don't have any, um, you know, um, looking back with rose tinted glasses type views on it. It's just a new bike to me. I have to admit, now I've seen more and more pictures of it, it is growing on me the looks a little bit, and um, both Richie and uh, Lamb Chop both said in the flesh it's a lovely bike and much better than it looks in the picture, so I must reserve judgement. I do want to have a ride on it. It is based on the GSX S1000, which I prefer the looks of. I haven't ridden that either, by the way. Um, so I should reserve judgement until I've ridden it, which I hope to do uh, you know, in the next few months. Uh, when they become available but um, anyway so the launch has happened and it has in the main got really rave reviews here MCN Dan Sutherland who's their reporter that looks like he's about 12 years old he said that it's an absolute weapon um, he does say though that there's a bit of low speed fueling jerkiness which is a which is a frustration which is a bit of a shame uh, and there's no quick shifter was the other was the other uh, issue with the bike not that that's a huge deal uh, unfortunately for the guys that went on the launch it rained all day so they weren't able to you know really thrash the bike but uh, yeah I haven't seen any bad reviews coming back of it so I'm sure it rides beautifully let's wait and see interested to hear your thoughts on that one this is going to be a Marmite bike some of these bikes you know again hats off to Suzuki for trying something different I'm, I'm really pleased when manufacturers do try something different but uh, for me ugh, it just doesn't look very nice I, I couldn't buy this bike because I don't love the looks of it but um, maybe in time it'll grow on me I don't know let's wait and see till I've actually ridden one seen one in the flesh haven't seen one yet all right so that was it for that edition of the paper another paper to go before we get on to some news about what's coming up on the channel. Right, I've got uh, ooh, seven stories I've picked out here, so I uh, hope you're still with me. First story, electric commuter for under 4K. Now this is amazing. It's a company called Super Soco that I'd never heard of before, I must admit, but they claim to be Britain's best-selling electric bike company. Now let's just put that in perspective. To be Britain's best-selling electric bike company, you need to sell, now where was it? It's here somewhere. I'm sure I wrote it down. Where's it gone? I can't find it now, just scanning through here, but I'm pretty sure they sold something like, you know, it's less than 100 bikes and that made them Britain's best selling electric bike company. So, so you have to take that a little bit with a pinch of salt, that one. But uh, anyway, it's uh, an interesting looking bike. It looks like a proper motorbike. Once again, uh, electric bikes uh, or, or manufacturers have not been that bold in bringing us something that looks super duper modern, but actually brought us something that looks like a motorcycle. I understand why they do that. So it appeals to... Um, uh, already motorcycle riders, it's not something too way out there. If you're going to have a way out powertrain, you don't want a way out looking bike as well, that could put people off. But anyway, the point of this bike is it's uh, as opposed to being like a super performant bike, which the other electric bikes we've seen so far, this is more aimed at the sort of 125cc end. Uh, so it's comparable with that in terms of power. So it puts out, uh, it's got a 3000 watt motor apparently. I don't know what the equivalent in BHP is on that. It's got an 80 mile range. Um, it'll do 60 miles an hour top speed and the charge on it, which are the important things, takes about four and a half hours to charge. And the really important thing with it is it's less than four grand if you take the UK government grant as well. So this seems a very practical version 
if you got if you want a city rider but just to get you around town this would be amazing for that because it's cheap uh, i mean cheap to buy and cheap to run by the sounds of it it looks cool uh, and it goes fast enough for city riding so uh, this one could really fly off the shelves um, we'll see it looks really cool anyway so that's this super soco electric bike from britain's best-selling electric bike company i'm sure we'll be hearing more of those soon right next story here it's just a little one tucked out of the way here nec parking cut now this is the bike show you know the motorcycle live that's held on a november i often moan about it because i find it's just a, a really big show quite difficult to get to they charge you a lot to get in they charge you a lot to park and so on i moaned about this last year and uh, i'm not saying they've listened to me but they've listened to somebody because they put the parking charges down which is great news if you're going by car if you have a bike it's free to park but they've now put uh, the parking charges down by 25 percent to um 12 pounds a day or 10 pounds in advance so so still I think a bit cheeky that you have to pay for parking as well as getting in, but it has gone down the right direction. So thumbs up uh, to the NEC for doing that. To be fair, I think the Motorcycle Live, they're a bit tied in by what the NEC say, I think. So there's some, it's not as straightforward as it may sound about how they do this charging, but the parking charges have gone down this year for Motorcycle Live if you're thinking of going. So that's gotta be good news. All right, moving swiftly on. Oh yes, this one was of great interest to me. Baby Panigale's V-Twin Future. Uh, Ducati have brought out a new 959 Panigale. It's of great interest to me because I'm a huge Panigale fan. I personally own an 899, which they didn't build for very long. Uh, I didn't get a 959 because I couldn't stand the exhaust on them. I went for the last 899 with the underslug exhaust. Anyway, it looks like they're bringing out a new version of the 959. It's still a V-Twin, that's the big news. They've not gone with a smaller version of the V4. There was some debate about whether they would do that. The big changes on the bike, as far as I can tell, number one, it's now got the single sided swing arm which just makes the bike look lovely the big bike has always had the single sided i have to say with my 899 i've never felt particularly short changed because it's got the double sided swing arm uh, but if you could have the choice then the single definitely looks better um, and the other big thing is the um the collector underneath the, where the exhaust is this doesn't have the finished exhaust on it it's just got a pipe that looks like it needs to be connected to an exhaust so i suspect for the uk market there'll still be some quite big exhaust to go on or end pipes anyway but the collector underneath is massive and i assume this is because of the new euro regulations that it has to pass on my original 899 my whole exhaust system is smaller than that collector that said um, it's still a beautiful bike there's uh, the styling is now much more reminiscent of the big v4 it's more angular um, personally i'm not sure i like that styling as much as the original bike but uh, anyway it's great news that they're still bringing the small bike out uh, anything else to say about it don't think so um, but yeah, great. I look forward to maybe having a ride of one of those. I've not even ridden the current 959. It'd be great to compare one to the 899. I am planning to do that later on in the year, uh, and then maybe I'll get a ride on one of these. But uh, if you can't quite stretch the sort of 20 grand you need for a V4, then you can get yourself a 959 and have 95% of the fun and that Ducati loveliness uh, that you can get when you own a Panigale. I love the bike. I don't ride mine very much, but just owning it every time I go in the garage and see it, it's a thing of beauty. I love them. Right, next up. Talking point. So this is a letter I've picked out here. This is from uh, Nigel Savile from Northolt. Hello, Nigel, if you happen to be watching. Are helmet cams safe? So this is something that's very close to my heart as an mo occasional motorcycle vlogger, when you ride with a camera attached to your helmet. Now, people do these in all sorts of positions. I found that, uh, for me, it's best on the right-hand side of the helmet because I can then activate the camera with my right hand. If you live in another country, you ride on the left, you probably have it on the left-hand side for obvious reasons. Um, and I've never really considered that having the camera on there is particularly dangerous. Uh, Nigel's point is if you came off the bike, that camera, if you've got it mounted in front of you, some people mount them on the front of the helmet, it could possibly go through the visor and smack you in the face, which I suppose is true. Number one, let's try not to fall off the bike. Uh, but number two, there is an issue there. I think, uh, and this is how I've always justified it to myself, with the camera on the side of the helmet, uh, if you came off and you hit the, the um uh, the helmet on the deck, the camera would come off because it's only held on with a sticky pad way sooner than it would actually go through a helmet. So I think it's okay, but I'm interested in your view. There's been no testing done as far as I know about this. Do you think mounting cameras on your helmet is dangerous? Certainly you get a bit of extra wind resistance that you do build your wind, your neck muscles up against after a while and you, and you forget about that. But uh, is it actually a danger having a, a helmet cam? And not just for vloggers, of course, but people that also record incidents on the road for insurance purposes, that sort of thing. So interested in your views on that. So uh, yeah, good letter from Nigel Savile there. Okay, next up. Ah. Fellow MCN columnist John McGuinness, I just always wanted to say that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he writes a column every week in MCN. And this one, he's basically saying it's got time was a bit of speeding was okay. So an interesting headline. But the sense of his uh, 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 article in this issue is have we taken all the fun out of motorcycling because of things like speed cameras and reduced speed limits and everything else? Is riding on the road any fun anymore? 
Very interesting point. I would argue with him that he's right if you're talking about sports bikes. It's back to what we we're talking about in part one where motorcycles are actually way more performant than you need on the road and you can't really use them on the road to anywhere near their full performance. Um, but uh, And it plays back to the point I was making again previously about having smaller bikes. I think smaller bikes on the road, absolutely there's fun to be had. But uh, today's uh, litre bikes, maybe they are, you know, there's, there's not so much fun to be had, which is a real shame. Again, interesting to see. If you've been riding for a long time, I've only been riding um, in this recent batch for the last 10 years. But if you've been riding, you know, throughout your life since you were 10 or something, um, you know, has the fun gone out a bit? A bit? Has it been sapped? And how can we get the fun back, more to the point? I've got some ideas about how we can get the fun back, but more uh, about that in future videos. So a little bit of intrigue for you there. All right, next story here, uh, the penultimate one. I said we'd talk more about the new Keanu Reeves bike, the Arch KRGT1. Um, and uh, this has been ridden by Richard Newland, the new editor of MCN. Congratulations, Richard, for your new job, by the way. Uh, and he absolutely lo loved it. Now, this is a bike that uh, I think only a couple of journalists got to ride it. So Richard was very lucky to get a go on it. But he said it was fantastic. Um, it's, it's much better than it looks to ride because these guys that designed it, not just Keanu, but his uh, sidekick as well. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, it's somebody who knows about customising bikes. They are enthusiasts first. Um, bike manufacturers second so they've made something that not only looks mean here but actually goes well as well but it is 90 grand as I said before so very much a specialist bike uh, not sure who's going to buy one uh, let's just see what Richard said in his summary uh, the arch combines bling with an unexpectedly accomplished ride yes it's got faults no it's not worth 90 grand uh, but try building one yourself cheaper which is a very good point uh, but it is imbued with an intangible specialness that deserves to get the super rich reaching for the build options list can't disagree with that can you so yeah again great that these uh, exotics uh, exist isn't it but uh, maybe not for you and i the man in the street and then the last story before we get on to some news about what's coming up on the channel is this one here my favorite mcn reviewer uh, nevesy has been riding a chinese bike the zontis t310 now this is an adventure styled bike it costs just 4k four grand four thousand quid uh, and he's saying that it's arguably better equipped than a new r1250 gs that's nuts isn't it because it comes think with things like um cruise control and what have you which is unexpected for a bike costing four grand again People poo-poo these Chinese bikes. This is, obviously, it's a copy. I mean, it looks very much like a GS with the boxes, the way the styling is, etc. Um, but, you know, we poo-poo these Chinese bikes at our peril. This is the way it's going. Like electric bikes, like it or not, the Chinese are getting going with these bikes. We're going to see more and more of these. It's well worth, I think, uh, you know, if you're on a budget and you want an adventure-style bike, check out the Zotis T310. If Neasy says it's a good bike, you can be sure it absolutely is. So, yeah, 4K. It's got an electric screen. Even the BMW GS doesn't have that keyless um, ignition, <coughs> something I'm never too keen on, actually. But the fact that it's got that on a four-grand bike, absolutely amazing. All right, there we go, then. That's it for the um, for the news review. I said I'd give you a bit of news about what's coming up on the channel uh, in the next few days. So just a couple of things I want to point out. First off, must just say thank you very much indeed to my sponsors of the channel. Do go check them out. Give them some love. Links below as to who they are. Uh, without them, I couldn't do the channel. And the same goes to uh, my new patrons as well. Thank you very much for signing up uh, and getting involved. Your uh, um, involvement is hugely appreciated. Uh, it's through people like you that I can keep the business and fly going. So thank you very much for being early adopters. If you're interested in checking that out, follow the link uh, and I've done a special video there. You can go and watch uh, about what Patreon's all about. So do go and check that out if you're so inclined. Okay, coming up on TMF then. Monday the 3rd, I've got the long-awaited Ducati Multistrada Enduro review. Now, I haven't ridden a big uh, Multistrada for ages. The last one I rode was the baby one. Uh, and I always used to criticize the Multistrada for being very, very top heavy. Well, they've done some changes to the bike. They've moved the engine since our last road one. And the Multistrada Enduro is the first of the big bikes I've ridden. So do check that out Monday the 3rd. Uh, I've got more on the Tuscany tour, of course, coming up. I don't know if you've been following that. That one is one of these tours that gets better as it goes on. And I think this uh, final episode, which is coming up on the 6th, is the best one yet do check that out again if you're so inclined i've got uh, a video coming up on the royal interceptor uh, sorry the royal enfield interceptor 650 i don't know if you remember or you've been watching long enough but a few months back five months ago january february time i did my first ride on the interceptor 650 i was very impressed with it i've borrowed the bike again i've got some more videos coming up on that starting on the 10th uh, with a look at uh, all the things you need to know about that bike before you buy one on the 13th I've got a review that I've been wanting to do for absolutely ages and the chance has only just come up. The Yamaha FJR 1300. To my mind, a proper sports touring bike. Uh, and I'll say no more about it because I don't want to uh, give the review away. But do watch that review on the 13th of the Yamaha FJR 1300. And one definitely for your, for your diary, the next live stream. June the 17th, 8.30 UK time is when that's coming up. So June 17th, put it in your diary if you don't mind. I'm desperately trying to get to more than a 1,000 
concurrent live viewers. Last time I think we peaked at something like 960 viewers, so I need another 40 to get the live viewage above 1,000. It just, it's just a little target I'd like to try and beat if I can. So June the 17th for that 8.30 UK time. Uh, and I'll no doubt be posting some bonus stuff as well. I guarantee to produce videos for you on uh, Mondays and Thursdays. I often do more than that. I often post little bonus videos on Saturdays as well, like indeed this one is. Okay, I hope that's been of some interest to you. I don't just do bike news here on the Missenden Flyer, but uh, I do bike reviews, I do how-tos, bits and pieces in the garage, um, tours at home and abroad, basically anything and everything about motorcycles. I'll try and cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. If you've not subscribed already, it'd be brilliant to have you do so. Click that button down below somewhere and subscribe. Okay, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.